Today, I'm going to give you a meatless Monday suggestion. When I cook vegetarian or vegan food, I find myself always saying, you know what this could use? Bacon or cheese or an egg yolk. Well, I'm here to say that this vegan recipe doesn't need any of that, and you are not going to miss it. So without further ado, here is the MLT, a vegan mushroom lettuce and tomato. I know it's kind of cheating because most of the BLT is vegetables, but two non-vegetable components, the mayo and the bacon, are really important pieces to that sandwich. So I'm going to use some of my homemade bread for this. It has four ingredients, water, flour, yeast, and salt, so it's vegan already. If you missed that recipe, you can check out the links below. Now, for the mushrooms. I've had this recipe for mushroom bacon bits for a while. It calls for shiitake mushrooms baked with salt and olive oil. I wanted to see if I could do this with portobellos to get a similar flavor. Now let's get started on these. Step one, clean the mushrooms. If you're gonna saute mushrooms, you can wash them before you use them. But if the mushrooms are gonna bake or if they're gonna sit, you don't wanna put them in water. That's why I'm gonna actually just wipe these mushrooms off rather than wash them. I'm also de-ribbing the portobellos. The ribs are just gonna burn in the oven. You can save the stems and uh, add some celery, carrots, and onions, and mirepoix, and then you can add some water, and you can really make a nice vegetable stock out of these, so you don't have to throw these away. Once the mushrooms are wiped, and they're de-stemmed and de-ribbed and ready to go, I cut them into strips. Now, the thinner the strips, the crispier the final outcome here, so try to get them as thin as you can. But remember to try to cut them as consistently as possible so that they finish cooking at the same time. I actually bought the shiitake cleaned and cut already, but this is going to be the same procedure as it is for the portobello. I kept the portobellos and the shiitake separate, and you should too, since the sizes are not going to be consistent. You don't want to mix these mushrooms because they will finish at different times. Once they're in a bowl, add salt, pepper, and olive oil and toss them. Now, you don't want these swimming in olive oil. You want enough olive oil just to lightly coat them. I'd say I used about a quarter to a third of a cup, but you're just going to have to eyeball this. Spread these out in a single layer on a baking sheet and put them in a 375 degree oven. That's 350 degrees convection. These are going to cook for about 40 to 50 minutes, but you have to stir them and rotate the pans about every 10 minutes. Your oven has hot spots in it and these may burn, so you definitely want to do this. Do not skip this step. When these are done, they're going to turn a deep, rich brown color and they're gonna be nice and crispy. It's gonna pull all the umami flavor out of these mushrooms and they're gonna taste like bacon bits. For the tomatoes, I'm using small cherry tomatoes because they looked a lot better than the hothouse ones that were picked over at the grocery store. This is actually gonna allow me to do a little more with the tomatoes too, instead of just slicing them. I'm gonna cut these up into small pieces and then I'm gonna add some salt, a bit of seasoned rice vinegar and a dash of sugar. Now, there's no measurements for this. All of this is to taste, but it's gonna bring out the brightness of the tomatoes. So just be sure to add a little bit at a time to get the flavors right. Now onto the mayo. I wanted to make sure this whole recipe was vegan, so I found another recipe for vegan mayo, and I actually think it's pretty great. It's very simple too. I didn't use a whisk on this, I used an immersion blender, but I suspect a whisk would work just as well. Take two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and one half cup of unsweetened soy milk. Then add to that a cup of neutral oil. I'm using peanut oil. Place all the ingredients in a tall sided bowl or in an immersion pitcher, which is what I'm using. I put the oil in last. I pulsed it to blend it several times until it formed an emulsion. Then you could just move the blender head around to pulse the rest of the ingredients. The recipe I found said that you should keep the oil and the soy at the same temperature, so that's what I did. My ingredients here are room temperature. This mayo is actually very good, and the soy adds the creaminess the yolk would to regular mayonnaise. Now, once your bread is toasted, you're going to want to assemble this.
and eat. Trust me, you're not going to miss the animal components of this sandwich. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and comment below and share this with your friends. Thanks so much for watching. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good.